everyone it's a leg saw again and look at this swiss army knife of a paladin build it can do everything whoops if we go the right direction it can tank up to four or even i would say about six to seven k volt health basically it can do a lot of damage it does damage over time it has melee attack which is the most damage it has ranged like this and it has strong mobility this build really does everything um it's kind of crazy i found this out more or less randomly it's a little bit like the caster healing hands paladin but this is a melee version and if you can tell if i just keep casting my healing hands if you see the ward goes up to about 4000 ward plus our thousand health because we keep healing ourselves all the time it's about 5k so I've been tanking and you do this while attacking so while you do damage you also heal yourself up and um, this build is insane so let's start with the spells we have healing hands of course this is our main damage dealer and healing thing all in once this is what makes this build so insane healing hands it's pretty much very straightforward you want to go down here this is your seraph blade Healing Hands is converted into a melee attack that hits in a wide arc in front of you. It now scales with melee damage instead of spell damage, and effects on this tree that granted spell damage now grant melee damage instead. Healing Hands still heals you, as well as allies within this area of effect. And it does fire damage as well, right? As it says, deals fire damage on hit. So this is what you see here, if you cast Healing Hands, you now have this arc in front of you that does all that shit. Um, the rest, you have to go with this. This is all cool. Um, more damage. You don't really need this. This is additional spell damage, which is, which is converted or scaling with melee damage, as it's said here, right? Melee damage instead of spell damage. And over here, we have low mana cost because you just need one point. You can basically cost nothing. Okay, you can just keep casting it. That's what you do. And this, even, even less mana cost. Yeah, you need this. Not necessarily, but a bit of it. And this down here. You need this, the Divine Barrier, and the Seraph Blade. These two. Because Healing Hands also grants Wall to allies based on your attunement. Now, I think that this is a bug. Because it also grants Wall to yourself. I don't think this is intended. This might get changed with the coming one of the coming patches. Um, because it literally says to your allies. Usually, it says to you and allies. Maybe it's just a textual problem. Maybe it's actually a problem on how this works. But this is what makes it possible for us to gain insane ward because all of our healing is converted to ward, which gives us 4 to 5k health in a fight because we are right clicking anyway, right? So this is actually pretty insane already, okay? You scale this thing with fire, melee, Attunement area buff, that's all cool, but mostly we're looking at fire and melee. This is how we scale this. Now, you scale your ward, right? So this is sort of the two directions you, you can go with this. Your damage you scale with fire and melee. Your tankiness you scale with healing effectiveness. Or just with healing. And this is, for example, where you can choose here. Because we have Divine Catalyst down here. This is... If you heal yourself, you cast Divine Bolts at people, and these usually, right now, do 5k damage, and you spread 3 or 5, depending on your passives. So you don't see this because there's no enemies here, we can look if we find some enemies. Um, should not be a problem. If I stand here and heal myself, it shoots these bolts at them, right? Because I keep healing myself, because it says... Um, uh, you are nearby enemies when you directly cast healing hands and heal yourself or an ally. All right? And so this is another DPS addition. This also gives you your area of effect damage. If you don't go here, you just have melee. And I tried it. It's a bit of a problem because your lunch, you can get to enemies, but it has a cooldown. And then you are really vulnerable to ranged units. So I would put at least two to three points. I have three in this. So this is a little bit of additional damage. If you put more in this, it just casts more bolts per, per healing, meaning there is more damage, right? But this takes a little bit away from your tankiness, because this is what you do with this 
urgent healing or this direction. Healing hands restores additional health up front, meaning you heal yourself faster, you get more ward, go up faster. So this is the direction you can sort of play around with what works for you, what works best for you. And your build also may be compensating for items if you don't get the ones you need. But this is sort of the AoE extra DPS damage you have with Divine Bolt. You also have this in your passive tree, we'll look into this in a second. So that's your Healing Hands main skill. This is pretty much what you can play around with. Then you have your Lunge, this is your mobility skill. This is very simple. All it does is, you want to go down here, because Lunge gains an additional charge, but it has a long cooldown. That's fine, but you want to have that additional charge because then you can charge at people fast. I go for this arming blow down here because it gives frailty to enemies. Very great. Frailty is a great addition, great ailment against enemies. And if we go here, this one is key. Call the weak. Lunge hits instantly kills enemies that are below a health threshold. The threshold is based on distance traveled up to a maximum. So, this is great for bosses also. If they are below 13, 15%, so you run away from them, for example, then you just lunge at them when they are 10% health, you kill them instantly. Pretty nice. But this is just a nice addition. The key thing is down this. Killing an enemy with lunge grants you frenzy for a short duration. Frenzy, 20% increased attack and cast speed. So it means you attack even faster because you will most likely kill a bunch of smaller mobs with that easily. So you kick them really hard. Very nice. Another cool addition to this is... Lunge's final hit has a chance to cast Smite and up to three nearby targets based on distance traveled up to a maximum. Another thing you wanna, you really wanna maximize the lunge distance as much as possible. But this casts Smite, which does additional damage and also buffs your attack speed. Again, this build is mostly melee. This is what the main focus of it is. The other things, like the tankiness or even the divine bolts, are a nice addition to make it more versatile. Okay, it's still mostly a melee attacking build. Keep that in mind. You see this especially also with the Holy Aura. Because here we go. Um, attacking cast speed. Crit chance. Crit multiplier. So it's all melee, alright? And here this is just fire damage. Because we scale with fire damage. And um, yeah, penetrate resistances as well. And the key thing is, it doesn't say it here, but you have to realize this only applies if your Holy Aura is activated. Because you have a passive, right? Passively you gain 30% increased damage and elemental resistance, but you have to activate it like this. So you have this glowing thing. Then you have even more attack speed. And then you have your crit multipliers, only if you activate it. All right, it lasts for four seconds. Yeah, four seconds. And it has a cooldown of 10. So you really have to look at this and how, how you set it up. But that's the main idea. It just gives you additional attack speed, damage, and buffs. That's what it does. Stitches of Hope. Key thing. Uh, you can have to up to 4 if you go with this. And this has health re regeneration and fire damage. That's it. It's a spell buff. But we also go down here. Damage of you and your sigil and your allies for sigil. Fire damage. Ignite chance. That's all cool. Threshold, Endurance Threshold, yeah, yeah. Sitches last longer, key thing. You can have one more, also cool. But the key thing is this. You have a chance to summon a Sitcher when you kill an enemy. If you kill a lot of mobs, you will constantly have four Sitchers flowing around you. You don't necessarily have to go for the fourth one. You can also go with just three and skills a little bit differently if you want. For, for example, if you want to go with resistances, it's all fine. But one key thing you can't do is going with this. You deal increased melee damage for 3 seconds after you cast Sigils of Hope. Because it says, after you cast Sigils of Hope. This is a key thing about the mechanics in this game. Because we will not be casting this ourselves. In most cases. Sometimes we do, but not really in the fight. This will be cast automatically through this. And this then it is summoned. It is not cast by you, so this would never happen. Okay, key thing about the mechanics. Now, when you, for example, go into your new Echo, then you want to cast your Sigils of Hope. But you can tell they eat a lot of mana. Now you have them flying around. But once you are fighting, you don't have to do this. Okay, so this is the main idea why we don't actually uh, go for anything else. You can play around with this a little bit if you, for example, like casting them and instead want to go with something else. It's fine. That's up to you. And the last one is Smite. 
And Smite, again, it does some damage if it hits people, that's all cool. It gets also Ignite Chance, that helps us, because Ignited enemies are great, right? They burn, that's good for us. But the key thing is really if we go down uh, over here, Righteous Fury. You deal additional melee fire damage if you have hit an enemy with Smite recently, last 4 seconds. 20 damage, and more attack speed in the same sense. Meaning the idea is, you lunge at people, it auto-casts Smite at them, and Smite gives you more melee damage. All right, This is sort of a circle jerk we do there. So the only thing you really ever have to do is you have to lunge at people as far as possible, keep right-clicking your healing hands, and with bosses especially, you need to activate your Holy Aura to get your crit multiplier. That's really what you do with the skills. Again, key thing, if you die fast or die too much, you want to increase this to 4. If this is at 4, you go to like five to 6,000 ward easily because you heal so much and you lose these a little bit. You can do this. At least have one point in it so it at least does a little bit of damage. But this is what you can play around with, with these two. You can also add idols that give you healing effectiveness. Then you are also even tankier. You can play around with this. We get to the idols later. Now that's your skills. Very simple. Passives. The base paladin is pretty simple as well. You gotta get to this one. Uh, dual wield melee weapons. You need that. And of course this one. Sword attack and cast speed. Because you wanna, wanna hit hard. For this you go with physical damage. That's great. A little bit of tankiness. Never hurts. And over here increase damage. This one... You don't necessarily have to take, but it, it helps a lot with armor, right? Armor is great because you are in the fight. Paladin. Now, you can play around with a bunch of things here. These ones are pretty sad. This is your fire damage. This is your attunement which, and elemental resistance. Um, attunement also buffs your damage on your healing hands. This is a divine bolt that is casted on melee hit. You have a 20% chance to cast divine bolt by just melee hitting people. This is additional to your... Healing Divine Bolts you gain from your healing hands, alright? It has the same damage because it scales with your fire damage and all that, but this is a different one. This is procced by melee hits, the other one is procced by casting your healing hands and healing yourself in the prompt. This one gives you additional Divine Bolts. It does not apply to the ones on your healing hands. Healing hands has it on in and of itself. See if we go here. Divine Bolts cast, free, can go up to 5. This is different from your passives. So this... I'm probably going to respec this. I might even remove this. Because the healing hands itself does enough. You can play around with this. If you also want to have more divine bolts by melee hitting, you can go with this. It's fine. Melee attacks have a chance to ignite. Cool. This one. Gains strength. Very important. And fire damage on recent melee hit. If you had a recent melee hit, you gain an extra fire damage. You will have this a lot because your attack speed is fast. Increase damage. If you have healed yourself on LA, ally, you have this, of course. More damage, more fire damage. I'm currently level 80 and not even uh, full. Go for these. And I, I will put the build down below if you want to go to 100. With this, basically, you want to also max out this one. Attunement at mana region, because attunement also helps you with damage. And you can also go with this, the holy icon, because it also gives you more healing effectiveness, so it makes you a little bit tankier. You might want to also go put two into this, and especially one into this one. If you have three or more Divine Essences, if you would die, you have a 10% chance to instead consume all the Essences and be returned to life at full health. This is especially great against huge blows from bosses, so I think every Paladin should pretty much go for this. Because you heal yourself all the time, so you get this pretty much, you have Divine Essences all the time. Right. You can also spec a little bit into the Forge Guard, I think it was over here. Resistances, Armor, uh, Strength. Melee damage, you can play with this a little bit. As I said, I will post the thing below. This is very simple, you just go for fire damage and healing. Healing effectiveness and all these things. This one maxed out is pretty good as well. This has 12 points in these, so... Pretty, pretty simple. Now to the items. You really only need one unique for this build. Okay, I have a bunch more, but you really only need one. This one, Exanctionist. Sadly, the game is still in a state right now where this armor is the best armor in the entire game. Even holy paladins run this... How do I phrase it? That necromancy, acolyte, sort of evil lich armor. Because it's still the best. Just what it is. 
And especially with this one, because this is what keeps our health low all the time. This is the key for this build. It keeps your health low. So if you heal yourself, you gain ward a ton because you're constantly healing yourself. You see, my health never really goes up because of the exemptionist. And your Divine Bolts are cast all the time because Divine Bolt is only cast if you actually heal yourself. If you're full health, it doesn't cast. So this absolutely supercharges this build. You have to have this, okay? There's no way around this. Then this one, most people should have this, really. This is a very easy one. This level 15, most should have fighting chance. I have it five times, I believe. 75% increased melee damage. Insane. You take more damage, but that doesn't matter because you heal yourself all the time anyway. Health gain on kill, irrelevant. Movement speed. This is a good one. If you don't have this or if you want to add other stats to it, you can also run an exalted one. But this is very powerful. And I like it a lot because of the 75% melee damage. The ring, Sunwrath. You should actually have this as well, I think. I think most people have this. At least one. I have it four times. If you don't have it, you go for a ring with fire damage. Okay. This one has fire damage over time, melee fire damage, chance to ignite, and even more fire damage and fire resistance. It's just great. It's all the fire stuff. If you don't have this, you scale again your damage with fire and melee damage. Okay. So you put any ring in there that has fire damage or melee fire damage. I think melee fire damage is not really possible on rings unless it's a unique, I think. Not sure. Or you go for resistances or health or healing effectiveness because that buffs your divine bolts. Okay. Very simple. Remember scaling is healing effectiveness, fire and melee damage. Like here, very simple. 80% increased fire damage, health, armor, mana region. Very simple. This one. Minion health is irrelevant, but 80% fire damage, critical strike avoidance, block chance. So this is a defensive one. Vitality also. These fiery dragon shoes, these are, I think, quite rare-ish. You don't have to have these. There are other ones. You can just run regular boots with fire damage again. These have fire damage, fire penetration. This is why I like it, because you actually go through penetrations, uh, like resistances. And you have a chance to cast a fire trap when you are being crit really necessary, but you take 80% less damage from critical strikes. That's a key thing why I like it. These are great. If you don't have them, just go with boots that have fire damage or uh, yeah, movement speed, healing effectiveness, melee damage, or just health. Health is always great. You see, same thing. Fire damage, critical strike chance. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this. Since we are, since this also scales with melee damage, crits are also insanely powerful. So critical strike multiplier, critical strike chance is another thing you can scale with. Sorry, I forgot about this. So uh, this one has, as you can tell, crit chance on it, health, elemental resistance, and fire damage. Insane thing. It's also what you will see here on this one. Melee damage, like in the implicit. Melee critical strike multiplier, 60%. 68% critical strike multiplier on the affix. Melee fire damage. Health on kill sucks. We don't need this. I'll explain in a second. And chance to slow on hit. So this is insane except for the health on kill. Health on kill or health on melee is both bad for you because you want to keep your, your own health somewhat low so the exemption is, or you, you, like, you get more ward from your healing. Because this doesn't count as healing, it's just health gained on kill. Now it does make you a little bit tankier, like if I kill someone I'm basically constantly full health and I have full ward. Because this also, for example, has 14 health on melee hit. It's not bad. I said it sucks, it's not bad really, um, but you, you would rather have something else like fire penetration or damage over time, if you can get this, alright? But it's not bad. This was an absolutely insane find. If you get an exalt like this, um, consider yourself lucky. Look at the implicits. 40 melee damage, 67 increased melee elemental damage, 10% increased melee elemental attack speed. Then we have 50% increased melee attack speed, this is better than the hummingbird. 92% increased fire damage and health and melee hit, okay, but we also have fire penetration. Because I was running out on um, affixes I can put on. But this has over 160% increased fire damage, like melee elemental damage. This one is insane. Also the 50% increased melee attack speed. This is why we are hitting so fast. So you want to have one sword that has a lot of melee attack speed if you don't have this. So you can go with the hummingbird. And another one that has Melee fire damage and crit multi. That's what you want on your weapons. 
Helm is pretty much the classic stuff. You have your crit multiplier on there as well. Armor, dexterity, strength, health regen. Health, that's not really necessary, but health also gives you more. Like the more health you have, the more ward you also have. So helmet is simple. Nothing crazy on there. If you can put on, you can also put the. What's it called? The helmet. Um, Peak of the mountain, with crit multi, but then you don't leech health from that. We don't need that. Maybe I will run this as well on this build. This is sort of the budget beginner version of this. This is why I'm running it. Same thing here. Health. Fire damage. Health. The other, the other two affixes don't matter. It was just the one I found. Very simple. That's your items. Again. Fire damage. Melee damage. Critical strike. Chance or multiplier. Doesn't really matter. Multi is more damage. Chance is more likely to hit it. And healing effectiveness is what... So sort of scales your entire damage over time. For the idols, same thing. Look, we have fire damage, fire damage, fire damage, and crit. Critical strike, critical strike, health, critical strike, crit, crit, crit. Increasing effectiveness on the small ones makes us tankier. Hitting effectiveness, hitting effectiveness. Also physical damage. Very simple. Like the idols are super simple. You go for basically the things you scale with. Same thing as always. You don't need... Like, usually ward builds have all the idols in health, right? Because you want to have more health, so you have a lot more ward. Since you heal yourself up like a madman all the time, you don't need this. Okay, there is no need for you to do that at all. So, very simple. I think this is a, actually a very cheap beginner build, as I said. And because we really only need Exanctionists, and this one you should have anyway. Anything else can be acquired quite cheaply, so if you don't have this, that sucks. I tried playing without it. You do die fast, because you're only sitting at like 1400 health. You have a pretty good endurance threshold, I guess, but... Like, you get one-shot by bosses very easily. And with this, when you're sitting at your 5-4000 health, you can usually ta face tank bosses pretty easily. So I think this is a good beginner's build. You don't need super crazy items to get going with it. What you want to do is, I sort of want to show you how to play this build. In the beginning of an echo, you sort of have to cast your, your sigils and you are low on health as you can tell, I have no health and no ward. So you have to start attacking and hitting people. So this gets up. You want to launch at them from as far away as possible. Because this gives you more, more chance to cast smite. Like you should just stand around with you quite a while. But as long as you don't like keep right clicking, you are dying fast. And you wanna there's a boss here, so you activate your holy aura and you just shred him. It wasn't really a boss, it was just this little cunt. <laughs> but that's what you do. You lunge long distances and you just face tank and keep right clicking. You can tank most things easily. Now some things, because if you for example fighting bosses. Then your sigils will run out. Right now I don't have sigils. So sometimes you have to move out and actually recast them. Then you lunge in again at them and you keep hitting. And you activate Holy Aura whenever it is off cooldown. It's also useful against bosses because Smite isn't triggered from lunge because you're standing in, in their face all the time unless you move out and then lunge in again. You might also just sometimes want to cast it on the face directly. Like manually cast it on them and then keep hitting because you get an attack speed fire damage and melee buff from it. For example, this is level 90. See, I cast my sigils, then I just lunge at them. Didn't cast the smite now because it's just a chance. It doesn't always happen. There it's, you see, when, it, when the bolt comes down from the sky, then your, your smite is hitting. That means you now have the buff. Sadly, it doesn't say that at the bottom, which is a bit annoying. Like, I would like to see the smite buff. Again, your lunge only has two charges, so you might run out of it if you cast it too much. So you gotta be careful with that. There is no way to increase that cooldown. But this is what you just do. You, you just jump at people, keep hitting them. And keep right-clicking to keep your ward up. Then when there is a big boss, you cast your Holy Aura and you should just cast it. You might even want to cast your Smite. I didn't even get to do this because he died before I could do it. And then you just keep right-clicking. That's what it is. Very, very simple build. It's pretty much a right-click build. 
Because as long as you right click, you gain your ward, you get tankiness, and you get your damage in. So that's very, very simple. It's the easiest guide build, I think. You can run. There is one a little bit easier, um, which is a cast version of this, where you don't go for the melee, which I will post soon as well. Um, I have to rebuild this one to get there. This can take even higher corruption. I think this one sort of... This is now a level 90. It's not even empowered. I think it would struggle at around 150 to 200 corruption um, because your damage output is not high enough. You don't do much damage. It's good, but it's not crazy, okay? So killing the enemies will be tough. You will be tanky and eat up a lot of shit, but killing them... This is sort of a beginner guide for lower corruption, up to 100. Like, empowered monoliths should be fine. Um... But the other build I will be posting, you can actually take to 2,000 Corruption and more if you are that crazy. <laughs> if you are that crazy. Anyway, um, this was it for today. I hope you liked this one. Cheap, somewhat cheap beginner's guide. I hope it helped. And let me know in the comments what you think of it, if you would change anything or if you have any more questions about it. And I will see you in the next video or live on stream, of course. Join me. Until then, bye-bye.